Hey, hi. In one of the previous videos, we saw the installation of Cisco Cloud Center on VMware platform. In this video, we'll be focusing on how to install Cisco Cloud Center on AWS. Now, there are two ways to install Cisco Cloud Center on AWS. One is through the AMI image, which you can get from Cisco. The second one is to do a manual installation using the installer files on a regular CentOS VM. In this video, we'll be focusing on the manual installation by using a CentOS VM. So these are the files that are actually needed to build your virtual appliances. Obviously, we'll need the CentOS AMI image that you can actually get from Amazon Marketplace. There are other files that are needed uh, for installation of Cisco Cloud Center, and those uh, files are uh, listed here. Uh, for CCM, we would need uh, the core installer.bin as well as the JAR files and the XML files. Similarly, for CCO, we would need certain files, and so so does for the AMQP. Now, these files can be downloaded from the cisco.com software portal. Uh, this is for release 4.6.2. So based on the release that you want to install, you can actually use. So you can you need to download the installer and artifacts. Uh, you need to download this and extract the files uh, to, into a sort of a repository from where you can actually fetch those files and build your custom MIs. So here I have logged into the AWS console. Um, you can choose the region that you want to install the Cloud Center components. Um, I'm going to use EC2. And what I'm going to do is launch an instance. Now I can go to the AWS Marketplace and look for CentOS VM. Let's type CentOS. And you can choose the CentOS 7 EM. And you need to choose the T2 medium. So we need three of these instances, one for CCM, one for CCO, and one for MQP. Uh, uh, in this video, since all the three components are residing on AWS, I need all the three components. If your CCM is uh, outside the AWS, you would need at least two components, that is CCO and AMQP. So I'm just going to select the T2 medium. I'm just going to say constant instant details. Uh, I'm just going to leave this at default. If you, if you want to run it on a specific VPC, you need to change it to the VPC and ensure that it has connectivity to the outside world. You need to add storage. I'm just going to leave it as it is. You can add tags if you want to do um, the security groups. Since this is a demo, I'm just going to leave it to the default security group, which allows all the access from uh, which allows access from uh, all IP addresses to the instance. But uh, I would recommend that in a production network, you restrict the communication to what is exactly needed between the components. And then you can just go and preview and launch these instances. Uh, now, just save time. I've already launched three of these instances. Let's quickly review my instances. I'm just going to press cancel here. And as you can see, I have three instances. I've renamed them as CCM, CCO, and AMQP. So these are the three instances that I have already running. So there are a few things that I would like to do uh, before starting those instances, such as setting host names inside the VM and uh, to ensure that it remains persistent across reboots as well. Uh, one of the things that you actually need to do in a production network is to uh, assign an elastic uh, public IP to those instances. Since it's just a demo, I'm not assigning a public IP, but you would need a public IP so that it is persistent across reboots. Let me start my instances. So I've just started my instances. It's going to take a little bit of time uh, to boot up. So once it's booted up, uh, let's go ahead and change those host names and uh, make it persistence across reboots. Now all my instances have booted up. As you can see, it has been assigned a public IP from the Amazon pool. Uh, if you have a static uh, public IP assigned or elastic IP assigned to each and every instances, this will remain constant and that is what is required in a production network. So let's quickly connect to this uh, instance so I'll use terminal to connect to this instance I'll just change this to centers it's connected uh, so you can see that uh, it already has the host name as labccm, but I have actually changed it. So I'll show you how to do that. So do vi etc host. And here you mention labccm and then or whatever name you want to and then exit out. So 
Similarly, you need to go to the hosts files and ask the hosts entry. So against uh, the local host, I've added lab CCM. Start. And then to go to EI, ETC, sysconfig, network. And you need to mention hostname equal to lab CCM. Then save the file. Then you need to go to VI ETC cloud plot config. Do a cloud dot config dot csc and at the end you just need to mention preserve hostname is equal to is true. So you just need to mention preserve hostname is true. And once you do do that, you just need to reboot the VM. Now, similarly, uh, all these steps have to be completed in all the instances uh, if you want to preserve those host names. Uh, so in the interest of time for this demo, I've already done those things across all the three uh, instances. So let me connect to all the other instances as well. Similarly, let's connect to the MQP. That's it. So now you have the CCM, CCO, and the MQP. So let's quickly check here as well. EI, ETC, hosts. And you can see that I have uh, named this as lab CCO. Similarly, we'll find the host name is lab CCO. config network you'll find that the host name is lab cco and if you look at your cloud config you'll find that the preserve host name is set to true That's it, preserve host name is set to true here as well. And things would be similar on the MQP. So let's log into the root. Now the first thing that you need to do is to download the installer files into the temp folder inside the uh, VMs. So let's go to CD temp and once you do and you can use wget to get those files. So you can actually upload those files to an S3 bucket or any other FTP server that is accessible from this VM and then you can download those files into these temp files uh, into this temp folder. So you can use wget or FTP or SCP which are is preferable for you. So I've already downloaded the files. So you can see that there is a CCM installer, CCM response and core installer. It's good to just change the permission for the core installer.bin. And then you need to run core installer one. So once you do that, you can uh, you can see that the, what's the usage of that command. So what are the parameters that you need to pass on with the command? 
so it mentions that you need to pass on the OS type the cloud and the module types so let's go ahead and do that so this is customer for sent OS 7 this is for Amazon cloud and it should be CCM so once I hit enter it will go through a series of uh, installations and uh, uh, it will come up once the installation is done what you need to do is basically go and log out of the VM and and then log back in so I'm going to just pause the video and come back once this is all done similarly you have to do for the CCO and the AMQP so I have to download the files again you can see let's change the permissions for the core installer.bin and then just run core installer.bin this is for CentOS 7 this is for Amazon and this is for CCO okay and similarly we need to do it for the AMQP so let's do sudo minus i cd temp and you can see that it's there and then you need to change the permissions just run core installer dot bin send to 7 for Amazon cloud and this should be rabbit so I'm just uh, I'm gonna pass the video till all the installations are complete and then I'll come back again okay now the installation is complete and I've uh, logged out and logged logged in back so let's do uh, sudo minus I again and then you need to do Java minus char CCM oh. Oh, just a second uh, you'd have to go to the temp file sorry and do a Java minus char CCM CCM installer.jar and CCM response.xml and then you need to hit enter once this is completed you need to reboot the VM a similar thing has to be done for the CCO as well as the MQP so we'll do this we'll go back here we'll do a sudo minus I C temp we'll do a Java minus char CCO installer.jar CCO response.xml and then similarly for the MQP jar. it also uses the CCO installer.jar but it uses connection broker.xml and once it's done let's wait you need to reboot the VM and then once the reboot is complete uh, we'll log back in and check so I'm going to again pause the video and come back. So now we have all the three machines put it up, all the three instances. There is the CCM, CCO, and AMQP. Let's go and start configuring it. So let's go to CCO first to configure. Let's get into the root and then do a CD user small sec, uh, user local small six dot pin. And if you do an LS, you'll find that there is a CCO config visit. So we'll just use it. run the utility um, agent bundle it will be same AMQP server we just need to give the server address so now this is 1.3163.253 it's the internal address of the Amazon instance um, so you can check it so this is 1.7231.63.253 and this is 253 uh, leave the port as it is I'll just don't changes you don't have to do any changes on the network the guacamole again needs to be the same once on the one sixty three to fifty three I'll leave the connection ports as it is so cancel here and then exit it'll ask you to restart the server to restart the Tomcat service so restart now similarly what we'll do is go to AMQP and configure AMQP so let's do a CD minus I we'll do CD user 
local osmos6.pin if you do an ls you'll find that gua config wizard.sh so let's run that so ccm info so now you need to mention the internal ip address of the ccm so it's 1731 let's check if it's correct uh, 1731.50.117 is the internal IP, so it's correct. Now similarly, you need to configure the CCU IP. It's 1731.54.42. Let's just confirm that, and it's 1731.54.42. So things are good. So let's exit the utility. It will restart the Tomcat service. Similarly, we need to go and do a configuration on the CCM. So let's go to the root CD user local osmos6.pin and do an ls, and you'll find that there is a CCM config visit. So we'll use the CCM underscore config visit. And here, uh, what we need to do is uh, we don't have to configure anything much here so you need to do is server info in the server info i'm going to use the public dns now so my public dns is uh 54 144 here so i need to change and uh, that's the problem when you have we don't have elastic ip attached to your instances it will always change so if you don't want to change it you need to ensure that there is an elastic ip that's available so ccm let's just check so it's 34201 13639. So let's configure that. So we need to change this to 34.201.136.39. And then again, this should be the same. 34. 201.136.39 and just say OK and we'll make the changes it will restart the service so let's go exit and let it restart let's go back to our AMQP and check a few things uh, we'll do a rabbit MQ kettle We'll show a list underscores users, and you'll find that there is a clicker worker and the clicker user. That's what you got configured. Drawing the scripts. The another thing that you need to check is the connection between the MQP and the CCO. So we'll do a list connections, and I have a clicker user having a proper connection between the MQP and and the CCO. So if you don't have this, you need you might need to uh, reboot the VM once again, uh, reboot the MQP and then the CCO again and see if uh, this comes up. It sometimes takes a while to come up and once it's done, uh, it's all up and running. So so I think this is also booted up. So let's go ahead and check if I'm able to log in. So let me open a new browser. So this is, let me just check what was the IP. And it should be HTTPS. So it takes a while. I think uh, sometimes it takes a while for the Tomcat server to come in. So just wait for a few minutes. And then it sh you should see the login page for the Cisco Cloud Center. So once the service is up, you should see this page. Let's go to advanced. And just add exception. And you should now see the clicker page.
and that's the clicker page so the default email is admin at clickertech.com password with clicker let's try to log in that's it we have successfully installed cloud center so let's go ahead and add a cloud so we need to go to the admin tab and within the admin tab sorry you need to go to clouds so you'll see I already added a AWS account but I'll just show you in terms of how to add that uh, my cloud is already added to it so what you need to do is just go add a cloud let's call it Naru AWS one click Amazon services and save okay I'm oh, sorry you can do underscore one click Amazon web services let's save it, it will ask you for a conf it also will ask you for configuration of the cloud so let's first go ahead and add a cloud account uh, we'll call it Naru AWS one account and you need to mention your IP addresses com, whatever it is you mention your specific AWS account number your access key and your secret access key once you've done that just hit save you'll have this account saved which will be used to configure your cloud so once you've done that go and hit configure cloud and you'll you'll see that your account uh, name and you can go and hit uh, can go to instance types and it will show you all the instances it is actually pulling from the region that you've installed your CCO every region would require a CCO you need to go and hit the region I've already configured it so but what you need to do is hit configure orchestrator and then you need to put the IP address of the orchestrator and IP address of the MQP now these are the internal IP addresses because the CCM is also internal and is actually residing inside AWS now if your CCM is outside the AWS cloud you have to put in elastic IP which is which will be persistent over reboots and then you need to mention those public IPs here so once you do that and hit save uh, so you'll find that the orchestrator is running and then you have a cloud which is completely running and you'll find that all the instance prices and all have come and once then you hit the dashboard you'll find that you have one of the cloud configured under cloud center so that's it for the demo uh, the in later videos, we'll see how to deploy an application on AWS. Thank you.